Kayvon Thibodeau, the Oregon pass rusher, comes in at number, at number, yeah. At, is there yeah. a typo? No, is, there's not. No, where's Kayvon? He's number six, maybe number seven, really. I mean, I think that's really realistically where I would put him. Again, that's not to say he's not a first rounder. It's not a total indictment on Kayvon Thibodeau. This group is real. I mean, I think there's a lot of people in football that look at the guys that I got there in my top four and go, oh, they're all going to go in the top 15 or 16 in the draft. So they're real that way. They're more talented than he is, 100%. I have no, like, reservations about what I did here or anything. Mike, I got to the point because, you know, of course, there's been a lot of piling on Kayvon Thibodeau and people, there have been the rumors about him dropping and all of those type of things to where producer Pete Demolitis or Matt Casey will tell you, I was going when I got done and going back to watch everything and really finalize my order on Sunday. I just sat there and I went, whoa, he's not going to be in my top five. And I felt bad to the point where I was like, man, maybe I'll just put him at five just because I feel bad and people have been piling on the guy. All right. But the play. And then, of course, I went back to my senses and go, wait, I can't do that. I got to go with what I see on film. It's not on the same level of those other guys. I'm not going to say there's, mo you know, not motor problems or anything like that. You know, I don't look at it and go, oh, he doesn't play hard. But what I look at it is go, he doesn't play aggressively, pedal to the metal, just total, you know, ferociousness and intensity like some of the other guys do. That's where I would say it separates, let alone the physical talent isn't the same, especially of the top three. The kid from Florida State, Johnson, right? The kid from Georgia, Trayvon Walker. The, of course, Aiden Hutchinson. They're, they're top five, six, seven, eight picks, in my opinion. And the kid, George Karlaftis from Purdue, is really awesome as well, to where I look at him as being a top 15 to 20 pick. So that's where it gets a little dicey. But, Mike, the film is underwhelming. It really is. The sacks are not all that impressive. He's stiff. I'll even say this. You saw his – let me just say this. Broad, broad thought here. You saw what he looked like in that interview there. You know, I don't even look at that as a body to where I go, oh, man, that's a – we've talked about Dan Daniil Hunter and what he looks like, Everson Griffin, those guys, the top four guys in the draft that are in front of him. The body is different. They're made out of stone and granite. This guy, as you see here, is a little thinner and longer and linear with square shoulders and not very big legs. And it shows on film. There's not great bend around the edge. There's not a tremendous first step. There's not great power getting off blocks. And I don't. I hope he proves me wrong, Mike. You know this ain't personal. This is what I do for a living. And it's just not on the same level as the other guys. I'm curious, though. How does he end up being so widely regarded as a top prospect if these flaws are, are that well, obvious? I mean, because what I always go back to is a lot of unqualified people making qualifying statements, right? Matt Barkley was going to be the number one pick in the draft, if you don't remember, right? I mean, there's, there's things like this every year where this happens. He was the number one recruit coming out of high school. You know, two years ago, he ended the year – with a little bit of a sack streak, right? He didn't play the whole year, but then at the end of the year, he came in, he got in, he put some good games together, and everyone's like, oh, number one recruit. Oh, he's 6'5 and 250. Oh, it just makes sense. And I feel like people just jump on the narrative, and, and it just becomes a thing, you know? But I, I think you've heard some of the rumors that are out there. And again, I'm not trying to look into any of that stuff, but what I will say is some of the rumors or things that you hear. You know, there's evidence of seeing that on film. And not that it's not like, you know, I, again, I, he, he's, he's physical. It's just not to the extent the other guys are. The other guys are really talented, and it's a really talented group of pass rushers. And I would be shocked if he goes in the top 15. I really would. And remember, at the top of the draft, we are talking about the ultimate investment that is made, a team that has had to suffer through some crap for the most part, typically, to get to the point where they're even using that pick, and they're trying to make the best decision they can. And if it's not Kayvon Thibodeau, it's someone else that's going to get that selection. And Aiden Hutchinson continues to be regarded as someone who is likely to be perhaps as high as number one. Although yeah. I saw Chris Collinsworth mention last night that Trayvon Walker Yes. Possibly will be the first overall pick when it's all said and done. I don't be surprised by that. Walker is a freak show. And every bit in the, as I stated in my podcast yesterday, it'd really be one of those things where I'd want to go, this one is 1A and one is 1B. Walker was asked to do some different things in college. So you didn't just see him come off the edge and rush the passer all the time. 
but his ceiling as a player is the is the maybe the highest in the whole draft. I mean, this he could be Miles Garrett. This guy, he could be Michael Bennett as a three technique defensive tackle. He's got incredible physical ability, and then Nick, you see the body, Mike. See what I'm talking about? Here's a guy that's he's 270. He moves better than Thibodeau. He's faster. He's stronger. He's more violent. There's everything about it. This guy has got a very high floor and incredibly high ceiling. Would not be shocked. I think he goes off the board one or two. I think it's going to go Hutchinson, and then it's going to go uh, Walker from Georgia one and two. Well, the points bet odds have Hutchinson as the favorite to go first and Walker as the second guy there you on go. that list. Right. So, and you look at what the Jaguars are doing on the offensive line. They don't need to take an offensive right. lineman. There was talk for a while that maybe an offensive lineman would be the first off the board. Uh, and, and, you know, teams still like to keep their cards close to the vest, even when they don't have to worry about being jumped. And they can always trade down a few spots and then draft a guy and say, hey, that's the guy we would have taken at number one overall. So there's no reason for anyone to be transparent. Oh, and on top of everything else, you've got the NFL telling you don't say who you want because they don't want to disrupt the TV show that is coming up in 16 nights from Las Vegas, where we will find out who the first overall pick is. Anything else you want to add from your top five for the, the final three guys on there who, who made the cut? Right. Well, I, you know, like the, the kid from Florida State, you know, 255, maybe in the conversation for the most natural, prototypical pass rusher in the draft, right, Mike? A guy that's, you know, Khalil Mack-ish, Lawrence Taylor-ish as far as the body's concerned, right, along those lines. And you just want to get him off the edge and let him get wide and go get the quarterback and fly around the edge. He is really impressive. He is. Carl Laftis from, from Purdue is just a man at the end of the line of scrimmage, just throws people around, can rush the passer. But it's all about his all-around football play that's really impressive for sure. And then the kid from Oklahoma, I, I mean, Mike, I, Nick Bonito, I came away shocked by his talent. It was Hassan Reddick-ish to me. It was Micah Parsons-ish with me as far as the athlete in space and then the ability to rush the passer too. So it's a really good group. If you need an edge rusher, there's going to be some available for you in the first two rounds. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.